You yourself easy. that you could handle money at yes, that time? I, yes, you know, I, I can handle money, for real. And the head is big for a reason. I know maths, I know <laughs> calculations. So, <laughs> so, so I, it, wasn't, it wasn't as though you were... You were you are not intelligent. I was very it was just financial, financial yes, circumstances yes, exactly. that landed you in that exactly. situation. Exactly. So I told my mom I would want to like do the music as a full-time job, and she was crying that when I leave the job, I'm not going to have uh, money to feed myself. But uh, lo uh, lucky enough for me, Izzy and then Kwao told me that they were going to hold me down. So right after that, when I stopped the job, they brought me to Accra. And okay. I came on Hits FM, Dr. Pounds, and then started rapping here and there. Mm. That was, that and you've was, never looked back? No, 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 no. After mm. taking the risk, I have never, ever looked back. Uh, sometimes I have to call people to send me money to feed to, myself to and stuff. And then uh, I still kept on believing because I know that uh, nothing good comes easy. And winners never quit, you know. Mm. Yeah. Coming to Accra to, to, as a word, be a part of um, a music scene mm -hmm. that had very very competitive you know people involved in it must have been a very difficult situation for exactly. you yes. um, what was the unique factor for you that based on all the things that were going around the competition and all you still believed that you were made for this okay so uh, KMJ you know me I was I always believe in standing out yeah. uh, being extraordinary there has to be that Midas touch about you, you know. Uh, you know, I'm, I've been the hardcore type. People know me to be the hardcore type, but as I always say, I've always been learning. So when I came to Accra, I told them I was gonna redefine myself because the Kumasi people already loved me. So I came in with that kind of hardcore flow, which was very rare in the system. Mm. And then people started paying attention to me. Hey, rapper, you do a rapper, giddy giddy, you like, you know. And right after that, uh, I've been learning and then making sure I fit into the Ghanaian market as well. That's doing the kind of mehoye and the castle songs with family. That's falling under the market and doing soft songs for, for them. But when I came, I made them understand that I am that hardcore rapper, the scariest rapper under the sun, and I was not giving chance. Yeah. And, and that's brought you over here. Yes. That, who was your major competitor, in quotes, yeah. you know, at that time? that could scare you to give up your dream? You know, I've, I've never been scared. The funny thing is, I've always seen myself as the greatest. Even when I was nobody, even when nobody was paying attention to me, I believed in myself. So I did a, a song called I Am, which okay. I was eulogizing Sa Kwadi, Ochame Kwame, I buried them, or Brafo, and, and I think Reggie Rockstone. So I've always seen myself as the greatest. So these five people were the people I was picking inspiration from, but no, none of or Ghanian, none of the Ghanaian rappers scared me or nobody really scared me but instead I was speaking motivation. Is, is that not supposed to be a rap game? Even yeah. when you're scared, you're not scared. Exactly. You know, you know, I call that the rapper's ego. Yeah. But, but when you're on the beat, you have to do that. But Prove that. You have well. to prove yeah, that exactly. as well. But off beat, you have to show respect when it's due. Yeah. 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 I see. Yeah. So, it, it, I mean, there are people that in connection by way of trying to establish yourself, you may have met yes. along the line, yes. rappers yes. alike. Which of them would you say that was able to put you on that platform or accept you to, to believe that what you have also come to Accra to do is yes. You know, I've always talked about, spoken about Bibi, but uh, at that moment, uh, everything was off. And when, when that platform came, when I got that chance, I said, oh God, that's it. Because this is the time for How did that happen? You know, it was a miracle. It was a miracle. I, I, never, I, I never even believed Sarko they knew me. Uh, he was just tweeting at rappers to hop on a song with him. My name was the term that he mentioned. So I have no idea how come. Okay, so you go to find out on Twitter? On Twitter, yes. It was just a post that I saw mm -hmm. that I was tagged. I, n I never. Yeah, and who contacted content. you after that? Uh, Sark himself. Oh, he, he made a call himself? Yes. Oh. Yes, yes on phone and spoke with, uh, with us and then said, so you should come home and record. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. And, and that, that, I'm sure, will be part of your, your, your success Yes, story. that's one and two Always. is Ochame Kwame. When immediately I came to Accra, Ochame Kwame called me to his house, offered me a good meal, and then... <laughs> what do you, what's, your, what's your definition of a good meal? Uh, you know, uh, you know <laughs> I, I want to have a feel uh, of uh, what a good meal looks like. Bro, <laughs> was it the morning? Bamba. So it was, it was the morning, morning. tea for you? You know, and, and, and it was great. And right after that, he gave me a song as well, a feature. Yeah. Oh, yeah. so you've been blessed, you know, yeah. and it's because of hard work, I must say. And the yeah. grace, you know. Yeah. Uh, child boys did the roadside way, then they put in the work, but if you don't get the grace, uh, sometimes it will be hard part. Mm. Yeah. How, how spiritual are you? Let me say 70%, you know. Uh, I'm not too spiritual. Neither will I say I'm very spiritual, of course. Mm. Uh, I believe in God. I believe in doing good. I don't really believe in going to church uh, necessarily. I believe. When was the last good. time you went to church? No, you don't remember? Two years ago. That was two years I ago. I used to sing at church. Yeah. So. Oh, was uh, it? As far back as? As, 
uh, two years ago. Okay. Two years ago, and then uh, I think the the ladies there was worrying me because of my locks. Yes. They didn't accept it. No, no, the ladies they, in the church. They loved your locks. Yes, and they were. So they wanted to date you. You know that, and, and then I had to. How many of them? Plenty, 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 plenty. What church is this? Uh, Grace Pillar Chapel. They were choristers. They were singers as well, you know. They were singers. And the ushers, and then you didn't find your taste. You know, I, I can't come to a church and then. Yeah, but if you if you if you like the person genuinely, you would take a step, and the step means doing one, it the right wasn't way. Wasn't one, so. But was there like, should be one of them that you no, would no, love no, no. more than the other. You know, even if I did, I I, I believe that you, you shouldn't sin at church. You know, it wasn't about sinning. It was about making a decision, a choice, and sticking to it. If you make it. a choice, it will lead to something, which I wasn't ready. So you were scared of fornicating? Yes, especially at church. But you can do it outside? Yes, even at the club, that's fine, but at church, yeah. <laughs> what makes you... <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> what makes you think that fornicating in a club and fornicating in the church has difference? At least it's not the same fornication. At least with one, you show God respect. One say, uh, we are not perfect, but we are not perfect, but I can't go to the church and, and be womanizing at the church. Mm. Maybe when I go to the club, I can just find a woman for myself, but at church, they, no, no, I came to worship my maker, mm. and then that's it. So that was the reason why you stopped going to church? Yeah, that was one of the reasons. And okay, then, there was uh, another reason? Every Sunday, they, they were expecting me to sing at church. They got to a point, uh, my songs were finished. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of church songs. <laughs> How did they finish? Oh, over seven months I've been singing, singing continuously. Uh, the, the, the song finished. Were, were, you getting, were you getting some sort of help from the church? No, 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 no. The no. church never helped you? No. With money? Money, it could be anything, just yeah, to support yes, you. Because yes. I mean, obviously, you were, prayers you were, they did, but no money. Yeah, prayers they, they were, did. They were praying for you. They prayed for me. But the uh, church wasn't paying, you, or not paying, but not supporting you. At the time, they didn't know that you needed help. You know what, at a point, I, I developed a strong bond with my pastor. Okay. And then uh, he used to visit me more often than first, and then so, most of the times he, he would call me to go with him to win souls. You know, so uh, I think supporting me was through prayers and wishing me the best of luck. Mm. And then uh, making sure that by God's grace, I'll reach wherever I want to reach. But with money, uh, it wasn't, it wasn't. So is it safe to say that the church um, or the pastor's prayers worked for you? Yes, it did. So because as at that time, at that moment, that was when BB came. Yeah, so it worked. Okay, so that was that's, um, timely intervention exactly, for you in exactly. terms of the prayers and, exactly. and your, your contribution to the church. Yeah, exactly. So singing at church, maybe God saw uh, Hasla singing and he said, oh, make a bless you, then come out. <laughs> <laughs> how, how would you describe your your time, I mean, the space of time that you had with Sarkodie, like? He said one thing that has been ringing in my head for, for, for a long time. He said, always believe in yourself and do you, because people love you for who you are. People don't love you because of your songs. Mm. Because when you are asleep at home and your song is banging at a club, they will dance to it. Mm. They love the song, but you always have to produce you mm. so that they will love you. Mm. Yes. So uh, meeting Sark was was such a great feeling that you know he's 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 such a great guy, which is why I always say that we shouldn't compare yeah. we the young ones to him when it comes to artistry because he's worked so hard to attain that level and then uh, we can compare our verses because you are rappers but with, with how far he's come and then being the artist of the decade and still being on top. We have to show him that respect, and mm. that's it. so meeting him was a, a very big blessing. Mm. You, you take you take a great exception to, I mean, what you rightly said about people always trying to compare you and him. I mean, in recent times you've been very agitated about, yes. you know, questions being asked about yes. it. Um, one scenario that happened with you in Londona, which yeah. um, one way or the other, some people thought that it was it was you know. It was okay. Others felt it wasn't okay, yeah. and you know had to be had to be looked at in a different way. Do you do you regret your 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 way of handling that situation? Yes. Or you you still believe that it was totally off? I regret. You? I regret it. You know, I'm learning. I'm still growing, and I believe if my PRX was a little bit top notch, I would have found a way to meander my way around how to answer it. You know, mm. because uh, walking off, it's like. It's like being disrespectful to an elderly or mm -hmm. the elderly. So mm -hmm. maybe next time I'm not going to walk off. But what he did was not fine because you can't ask a question and then, and then 
expect an answer when the interviewer, uh, the person you are interviewing don't want to answer, you just move on to another question. But you don't repeat and, and be so it's kind of like, hey, Tinchina, are you for answer? No, that, that was not the reason why I came there. I came to promote my song. So what I did was very bad mm. and I regret doing that. And I pray that uh, as I'm growing, I will learn and then make sure that whenever such things happen again, I'll find a better way to go around it. But uh, when I did that, I felt very pleased with myself because I had to do that. Mm. Because uh, if I had not worked that way, I would have said something that was going to affect my career for a very long time. Mm. So uh, I think for now, I regret. But as of then, you know, it was a good, good thing I did. Mm. It was a good thing. You, you, you come across to me as someone, um, and maybe to other people as well, as someone who is very, very hardcore. Um, are, you, are you pretending? <sighs> are you hard. emotional in pretending to be a hardcore guy? I'm just unpredictable. No, yes. What do you mean by unpredictable? Yeah, you know, I just fall in per what's happening. I, I, I go with the flu. Where when I see fire, I know how to walk through it. Uh, when I get to freeze as well, I know how to deal with it. So uh, I'm very hardcore and I was one of vows there as well. So mm. it's like that, soft heart. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so that means you're, you're, you're an emotional person it, not to I'm some emotion. extent. Yeah, to some extent. I'm not too emotional. Mm. Neither am I too hardcore. But you know, it's a brand. Uh, you have to give them what what they want. So sometimes, even if you're hardcore, you have to just mellow down for them and then uh, go with the flow. If the hardcore is needed, I'll give you. If the soft is needed, I'll just give it. To How's you. your love life like? You know, uh, Mr. Lover Boy, who has never experienced love, uh, the person that I really loved. Or I've really loved all my life was my dad, but I lost him uh, in 2010. So I don't really believe in love because I even gave my heart to some girl way back and then she just she broke up with my heart and then she went for a superstar. Uh, I won't mention his name, but he was in Yolo. Uh, so then time I was a young boy, so uh, she left me and then since then uh, I've just been focusing on my music career and making sure I give that that side of me that needed love so has that affected you negatively that situation you went through because yes, it's not yes. making you love anybody yeah, anymore. Yeah. I'm, I'm loving people but not not as i used to love people uh, but uh, you know as i'm growing i'll make sure that uh, i can i can have some kind of different kind of uh, 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 how should I say, different kind of ideologies mm. or different kind of ways that's going to make me love people as I used to. But for now, you know, I'm very focused on my music and I don't even see the girls. I'm just focused. Because so music, I'm curious then, uh -huh. how do you satisfy your sexual desires? You know, I don't have sexual desires. <laughs> I'm a hardcore rapper. You don't get honey? No, 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 no. no. You don't feel intimacy no, with no, no, opposite no, no, sex? No, 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 no. How does that happen? You know, because I'm exceptional, you know? I'm always in the studio working. I don't feel honey. I don't like girls or nothing. I only like Interesting. Rice. <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> so when I'm honey, I read the Bible, you know. <laughs> now, you, you got me thinking. Um, you got me thinking a lot. A lot running through my mind. Um, personally, I would disagree mm -hmm. if anybody should even make an attempt to put, put you in that box. So you know I'm but I'm still tempted to find out if you're gay. Okay. Is that what it is? Uh, for real, uh, you know, I was just kidding. Sometimes, you know, we all be humans. I can't any the other, but uh, I always make sure that it's all about the mindset. Once, so, once a while, when you want it, you call and then she comes around. Not really. Uh, let me say, in a year, anybody any day I'll come back. So we don't really get in touch. But uh, she's in Ghana. Oh God, she's in Ghana. She's in Ghana. Uh, okay, so okay. Uh, um, in, in, in 15, 20 years' time, yeah, mm -hmm. how, how would you want to keep your relevance if you're losing out in 15, 20 years, 30 years, if Amrado, the hype, the vibe, and everything around you is... 15 is, years. I'm, I'm talking about um, um, hypothetically, hypothet hypothetics. Um, if, mm -hmm. if, um, hi hypothetically, let me put yeah. it that way. If you're losing out your relevance, if nobody's giving you attention anymore, you've done your part, We've loved you over the years. We've seen what you have done in about 20, 30 years, 50 years. If nobody is giving you attention again, how would that feel for you? Uh, you know, I'll feel sad because I am that type who always want to be heard. I, I want to be in this game forever, if, if that's possible. But uh, if I've made some investments and I'm living the, the kind of life that I want, being able to cater for my family and myself, I'll be pleased. 
but if I get to that point, may God forbid that I have not done all these things and struggling, mm. that's when I'm going to sit down and cry. But uh, shouts to my team, I know that's not going to happen and myself as well. So uh, it's a two-way thing. If I have everything that's going to make me happy at, the, at that moment, uh, I'll be fine. But if I'm still struggling at that point, that's when I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be worried. You've got a new song, um, Doing Very Well, uh, Mehoye, yes. and all that. Tell us about it. Um, what's, what's, what's that project all about? Okay, so Mehoye is all about my career and how far I've been struggling. And then again, it speaks about the current happenings in our societies, people committing suicides here and there. Uh, just recently, I cast I had uh, two boys kill their friend for Sakawa. You know, all these things are because uh, the platform that we have, most of us now preach about money, 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 Lamborghini, this and that. But what I want to preach through Mehoya is that be content with whatever you have. Uh, when you have one city on you that you can afford Gary, go for it. Better days are going to come. But uh, don't go for what you can't afford. That will trigger you to do stuff that you are not supposed to do. So Mehoya just says that appreciate what you have and thank your maker because you have life. Yeah. So it's just a single, off an EP or an album? No, it's just a single. It's just a single. Yes. Are we working on an EP or an album? album. We're wrapping up, so l I'm, let me know. I'm working on an album and a virtual live concert as well. Yes. A virtual live concert? Yes. When is that? Uh, hopefully October, November. Okay. Yeah. And the album will be dropping along that time? Or really, the album will be next year? We haven't decided yet, but surely it should be this year. Is it ready? Not ready. Almost ready. Um, okay. Almost ready. But it's going to drop this year? Yes, of course. Okay, yeah. um, we're, we're definitely going to check into that when, you know, when it drops and then you know, we, we, we get to push it as well. Um, I've had a very wonderful time with you and congratulations to you, oh, thank you. Uh, for this. this. This is incredible. You know, you this know. is for my fans, Ami Lions, and every, each and every subscriber. You know, God bless you guys for holding me down. This is just the beginning. Let's keep supporting Amrado. I have more for you. Yeah. Bro, chop and knuckle. Thank you. All right. So uh, it's, it's been awesome uh, hanging out with. Uh, uh, Kantanka. <laughs> uh, Mr. Kantanka's son, who is now a superstar, you know, I remember vividly when we were just having this interview before I signed up to, you know, walking with him on the roadside, you know, trying to get to the venue for the interview. We decided to take uh, two minutes, three minutes walk maximum. And everybody just mentioning his name. Everybody, the taxi drivers, the, the, the private drivers. I mean, everybody at every point, you know, Amrado, Amrado. I felt I was nobody at that time, but it's all good. Now, let's say a big thank you to Matt Barnes, like a furniture company, for giving us the spot over here. Beautiful place. If you need anything furniture, this is the place you need to come and grab your furniture. Trust me, you won't be disappointed because uh, the quality is superb and it's something that you need. Thanks for watching. I'm KMJ.